thanks again um, to you all for being here. Um, I'll start with a few questions, and then we can take some from the audience. Um, but I, I wanted to begin by um, something Mary Helena's film introduces into the program, though I think uh, all of your films are dealing with it or thinking about it in some way or another, which is th this idea of uh, reproduction and or repurposing existing material to um, uh, mediate your own ideas. So. I, um, I wanted to think about this as we maybe talked about um, each of your films. I mean, Jordan, for example, you're working with actors, um, and they're in uh, very heavy, I think, specific makeup. Um, and then at a certain point, they they transform into to mannequins. And so I, I'm curious uh, how you thought what, what this uh, thinking around this kind of a this nested series of car of crude copies uh, sort of meant for you. Yeah, um, something I'm interested in in general is interchangeability. And I like using dolls and masks and different strategies to mediate a character to make them not specific or something that can be projected onto. Um, and the film being based about like an ailing patriarch and kind of like a coma state, thinking about the lines between a uh, body and a human and, yeah. Can you um, maybe speak a little bit more about the, uh, the inspiration uh, behind this film and um, sort of how we find ourselves um, in this, this private jet? Yeah. Um, it's based on, loosely, based on a true story um, of my family on an air ambulance with a lot of kind of fantasy sequences mixed in. Um, yeah. And other <laughs> references, but mostly based on a true story. Well, I, I guess I'm curious about uh, these other references. Like, for example, so the, the Mamas and the Papas song, which is one of the... I think the rare instances of uh, you know voices that we hear in the film. Yeah, I um, I wanted it to be very American. I wanted the the family to symbolize an American family in some way. So I was thinking about the America that I'm referring to, and um, I'm blanking this movie with Parker Posey where she, she's obsessed, she's in love with her brother and she's obsessed with reenacting the JFK assassination. Anyway, I saw this movie and I was very inspired by it and thinking about that being the America that I'm referencing, um, a kind of like folky white horror. Um, and so there's some other JFK references and then I really, wanted a song since there's no dialogue and that song um, felt kind of religious and kind of went well to me with um, the situation. So that's, I guess, an example of one of the references. I was thinking also about like, um, along the lines of American um, first person shooter games like Doom, for example, um, yeah. So this is why you maybe have this book, Me and Lee, that you kind of prominently showcase at a certain point. I had to look mm -hmm. up what that book actually was, but it, I think it's it adds an interesting layer to what you're talking about, too. Yeah. Um, well, uh, Joshua, I guess before we uh, maybe talk about what you're doing <laughs> to your film, I, I'm curious if you can if you can talk about what uh, the footage is that we're seeing uh, you work with and maybe what uh, significance it might have to you. Um, well, uh, the footage is a combination of, uh, disposed, uh, material from, uh, Photochem, which is a film lab in Los Angeles, and some, uh, 35 millimeter trailers and odds and ends that, uh, Luther Price had given me, um, and, uh, as well as some, some ink and, uh, lots of double-sided tape. Um, and I think there's some some uh, some skin in there as well. Um, well, all right. Now I, I am curious about what you are doing to this film and what we're seeing because it is. Um, I still watching it uh, 
in many ways it's a, it's like a mystery to me. I mean, there's evident you're evidently like uh, inverting the film in, in some ways, and you're uh, it's obviously dirty. And uh, I I'm just curious, you know, I, watching it, it for me it's like this experience where you you know especially it's on film print. It's like on the edge of breaking at times, especially when the sound cuts in and out, and then a phone rings, and then it makes me even more nervous. Uh, but I, yeah, I I so I, I'm, I guess I'm curious. You know what your process is, what your thought process is as you're working with it. How long did you work with the material, and um, is it intuitive, um, or have you found that it's become more deliberate uh, the more you work with it? Um, I'm a bit of a rambler, so I'm, and I'm weighing how much. Uh, I spent about three years, uh, give or take, on it. Um, I would say this is the fixed version, and that. Um, this is the version. So basically, it, uh, I should mention Luther Price is an amazing filmmaker who died in uh, 2020, who was a big inspiration to me. And this is kind of uh, maybe like a knockoff of, of Luther that I did. Um, but I also, I mean, I'm, I'm literally just shredding the material. Um, it shred, like I had, some, I have some paper bags and some scissors and hole punchers and I do both when I work with in film and when I edit digitally. Um, I tend to work it quite intuitively. I uh, a big fan of the sort of letting the unconscious guide do a little bit of the driving. Um, but yeah, so just shredding things up, deciding uh, certain sequences that sort of work. Like there was this footage that some, I assume. Uh, some some film student had uh, made with like the zipper and this sort of uh, this this woman in a room and uh, you know and I, I there was sync sound in that which is exciting to me and uh, I had painted some clear leader just very roughly and uh, put some double sided tape down uh, which was a tip that Luther had told me uh, back in I want to say twenty fourteen. Um, and yeah, I just was hole punching thing, you know, things that caught my fancy and, uh, I had a lot of, uh, sprockets and I thought what, what if they're just long passages of sprockets, you know, cause I've got so much, I, I don't want to waste any of it. Um, so I was laying down, you know, multiple layers and changing the way that things would go. And every time I would project it, you know, things would pop off or fall off or get caught in the projector. Um, when I digitized it, I, I finally did a proper scan of it, uh, which is what you're seeing is kind of based on. Um, and I call, I call that the fixed version, the version that doesn't fall apart and then change or need repair after screening. Um, actually, Sunday, like I'm the 16 millimeter, like flimsy ephemeral versions showing in, in LA. Um, and that's, I consider it like a completely different thing. It's, it's always changing, it's always dying. Um, this one, I mean, this is a 35 print, so it will also kind of, you know, it's subject to that. But this is actually a pristine print. The sound uh, was originally sync, but then uh, when I got it scanned, uh, the lab that I was using didn't scan the sound. They thought, oh, just, you know, this is, the soundtrack is like taped down, it should be visible. Um, it's not meant to be heard, but, uh, so I then uh, used, uh, basically sound that I'd recorded when I shot it while I was projecting it onto a wall and sunk, synced that roughly to the scan. Uh, but then I cut out the parts of silence or whatever the film would get caught in the, in the projector and things would start breaking. I would start cursing and, and you know, heaping violence onto, onto these machines in my life. And so I, I censored that part. So that's the silence um, is, is me swearing and things sort of falling apart. Uh, but I kind of like that. Uh, part of me thought it would be really funny if I just blew up, uh, printed the 35, the projection on the wall, but it, it's uh, maybe less satisfying visually. This is the family-friendly version. Yeah, it's, it's you know, ch I hear that uh, making films for children is very lucrative, so that's part of the goal here. It's a family affair. Yeah. So uh, how long, like, when did you begin this project? Um... I mean, it depends. Uh, the like physical labor of assembling it all uh, was 2019, uh, 20, maybe 2018, late 2018, early 2019. Uh, but I got the footage 
Luther gave me the stuff in 2014, and I probably got the the lab rejects sometime between 2013 and 2016. It was when I was in LA. It's my LA movie. Um, well, Mary Helena, um, I, <laughs> I, I I guess I want to uh, hear first when and or and, and how your film came together. I mean, it's bringing in a lot of different sources, but uh, I guess first I'm curious to hear about um, Berliner Mauer and Mary Richardson. I'm curious how these two um, particular figures came together for you. Uh, yeah, so this is my first film with a narration or like a language-based film. Everything else has sort of been focused on montage and um, the way that I've been editing or bringing sound and image relationships together, it's always been like there's there are discrete objects that are placed in proximity to each other. And so I wanted to make a film that kind of extended that conceit, um, but made a film as like a container of an exhibition, that it's like an exhibition walkthrough. Um, so I knew that I wanted to be kind of quoting or copying or stealing, reproducing other art objects. Um, so I was interested in vandalism of art and uh, I found out about Mary Richardson and um, knew that I wanted her to be a figure. And um, then I, I, I'm not quite sure how I found Berliner Mauer, um, but the fact that she made her home into a museum and that was she was interested so much in the consent of the models that she made, being um, consenting to be in her home museum, um, and the fact that they were surrogates to the Berlin Wall um, or at least like objects of desire um, that were surrogates for her felt like a nice um, way to bring up like these fugitive forms or where desire accrues for um, these two really complicated desirous women. Um, so I wanted to put them in dialogue with each other and other art film objects and art objects. Um, so that, that they they're, they're sort of they're sort of separate, but I think that there's moments where they merge with me too. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I guess I'm I'm curious to hear more about your 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 research process um, because there are so many I think you know disparate kinds of sources that you you know you list at the end of your film. You're you know you're working with Freud and Jack Spicer to studies of eye movement. So I'm just curious how this uh, all of these. You know, elements come together for you. You know, in the research phase. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's 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 similar in the fact that I mean, it really is sort of based on like attraction and like desire to the raw material, um, and then finding resonance across them. Like, there's a lot of doors in this movie. There's a lot of you know. There's a lot of um, so it's like, like how like uh, I, I guess I'm interested in creating commonalities that then can invert in on themselves over the course of the film. That like. Um, Maybe there's like a sense of like recognition or deja vu or maybe or like pattern recognition across these really disparate subjects. But if you hang with the film long enough, like you can see that they start to kind of turn in on each other. And like the opening of the film, there's this line that says the door as a wall is an invitation. And I think that sort of like gets to the heart of the film where um, objects are themselves, but they're serving another role. And they're also like um, inviting but refuting their own invitation at the same time. It's a very conflicted movie, I think. Um, and so, I mean, it really is just like the material that um, like that I'm drawn to. Um, and and like, and I'm, it's like the thorny people that I want to put in this movie. And like Mary Richardson was an arsonist and like, um, like, uh, like loved women and later became a fascist and um, is just a really, um, very complicated person that I felt like could contain a lot of these contradictions of being a very austere film about display. So, you, and you mentioned this is your first film where you're you know, <laughs> dealing with writing language as opposed to montage. So, uh, I, I'm curious how you you know saw your text in relation to your visuals and your sound. Are you are you writing and editing and and doing the sound at the same time, or what? What comes mm -hmm. first for you? Uh, I really tried to make this like work on the page before I brought in any images, and I liked the the, the frustration of or the idea of making the most austere visual film um, that's about visuality in a lot of a lot of ways um, or desirous looking. Um, and 
so at first I thought it was going to be more of like a formal description of art objects that either you would see or wouldn't. Um, but then I, that got kind of boring. Um, and then I found Mary Richardson's memoir. And I knew that I wanted to arrive at a first person account of the attack of the Velasquez painting. And then it just sort of snowballs. It's like, I don't know. It's like having a divining rod where, you know, like, like rat, like rat man was Freud's, you know, subject who was so afraid of like bodily violation and like called people objects when he was upset as a slur. And I just felt like that was a perfect counterpoint to, um, you know, falling in love with a bridge or a wall. So it's really just point counterpoint. Uh, lots of time at the New York Public Library. Um, okay, we can um, take some audience questions uh, mm -hmm. if there are any. We don't have too too much time, but um, curious to hear your thoughts. Yep, we have a, a mic that can come to you. So yep, right here. Um, I mean, it was kind of, I mean, you know, thinking about Luther Price, so, you know, he's a filmmaker. Um, I'm just, you know, I, I'm a sadist, I enjoy, like, sort of destroying a thing, um, and sometimes, you know, like, working with the material, you have to really kind of let go of any kind of preciousness. Um, I mean, thinking about it as collage, um, that would be another way to think about it. Yeah, I don't know. Um. I don't know if this questions. I don't know. I think I need to think more about it. Yeah. Um, I think everything can be read as political. So seeing media sources in a hierarchical way or taking away a hierarchy is a way a practice a way to practice making stuff or being inspired by things and. That's all I, I don't know. What else? I, um, I took great pleasure projecting a made for TV movie at the Museum of Moving Image. I don't know. That was like my fun, like kind of inversion of, I don't know, uh, like a piece of moving image that wasn't supposed to be on the big screen being bootlegged. And, um, I don't know what kind of cosplay that is, but I, <laughs> it was important to the movie. One last question. Um, yeah, that's um, a type of video game. And oh, do you mean to explain why I referenced that type? Yeah, how, how do you see that applied in your game? Oh, um, well, in the scene where uh, the character dressed in pink gets the gun the camera switches to be from her perspective and so yeah I guess formally and then the light changes to be more kind of greenish blue instead of warm and the soundtrack includes these like fake gun sounds and that was all my interpretation of um, a first person shooter segment Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, that's all the time we have here, um, but I guess we can always continue the conversation in the lobby or something. But uh, thank you all for being here. And thank you. Thank you.